Good morning everyone, good evening, and good afternoon to viewers from all walks of life. This is Denzomos, and you are welcome to the channel of truth, enlightenment, freedom, and the channel of breaking empires free. If you are new, on this channel I talk about narcissism and narcissistic abuse, I talk about spirituality, and I talk about personal self-development. And if any of that resonates with you, I invite you guys to join us, give us a like, share this video with your friends, and you may subscribe if you haven't already. And for those that have always been with us, you are welcome back, and I thank you for your love and support. Now, before I start this video, uh, I'd like to appeal to the guys who are out there, um, and I'm going to share with you exactly what have been my steps to the healing process, and now, eventually, did I become the person I am today. So we're going to go through these steps one by one, but before I do that, I would like to, stand, I would like to send out a very strong message to the victims and survivors of narcissistic abuse. So for the most of you guys who have uh, taken the steps to get out there to start healing yourself and to uh, start work on yourself, number one, I want to make it aware that you are going to get a lot of resistance from your family members, from your friends, because a lot of people don't understand what is narcissism. So the very moment you decide that you're going to start coming out and speak, because a lot of people who are out there, speaking is part of your healing process. So when you've decided to speak, whichever platform you're using, maybe you're speaking to individuals, maybe you're using your own platforms or social media, you're going to get a lot of resistance from family members and some friends. And some of them, they are going to come around and they're going to tell you that you're crazy. Now, this has happened along my journey. Uh, in the early days of my sharing, when I started sharing my stories and uh, in, during my healing process, I started sharing my stories. And uh, I met a lot of resistance as well. So there was uh, some friends uh, and especially most of the family members. So they were saying, oh, you know, you, you're crazy or things like that. So a lot of them, they don't understand this journey. And again, I did not have to judge anyone. But the only thing what I did, I just had to cut off, to cut off all these individuals. When I knew they weren't for my highest good and they were not helping anyway in my evolution, I had to cut them, cut them off and let them go. So a lot of you individuals out there who are surviving narcissistic abuse and the victims and the survivors, you are going to get a lot of these comments from your family members, from your friends. They are going to turn against you. They are going to start fighting with you. Because they, they don't understand what is narcissism, some of them, even some of them, they are the narcissists themselves. So it is going to shock you that some of the family members you have been involved with for all your life, most of them you are going to awaken to the fact that they are narcissists. So for the most of them, when they see you starting to talk and get out, of there, get out there and share your stories or the things like that, they are going to call you crazy, they are going to put up resistance, they are going to call you all sorts of names. It is important for you to know your healing is your process. It is not anybody's process and nobody else is going to heal for you. So if you're a person there who is struggling to heal, you have got to take a very major decision to plug, to unplug yourself out of those individuals and get them out of your life as soon as you can, until you know that you've reached a very good level of healing. That's when you can decide if you want to take them back or not. But again, I'll also warn you that most of those individuals that are part of your, are a part of the criticism and the critique that is coming from everywhere, most of those individuals, whether you want it to believe it or not, most of those guys, they are also narcissists themselves. Some of them, they could be lesser ones. They don't, they don't really know who they are. Or some of them you can find, they are also mid-range narcissists. So in this video, we are going to go through the process. So I'm, going to get, I'm, going to, I'm going to mention to you guys about seven process, seven stages of the recovery process after narcissistic abuse. Now you see, guys, again, I have to say, for the most of you guys who have been asking me some questions, uh, narcissism is very deep. So narcissism is very spiritual. You guys have always asked me again and again. I've always told you this is spiritual warfare. So there's nothing about those uh, so-called disorders or whatever they want to call them. Narcissism is spiritual and this thing is highly demonic. So if you've been dealing with a narcissist, you have got to take the power in your hands. Make sure that you are desperate. You have got to be desperate to heal. Because if you don't come to that place of desperacy that you want to heal, that is when the cycle is going to keep on going on. And, on. and uh, guys, because this is a spiritual cycle, this cycle can go on for the rest of your life until you decide as an individual you are going to stop and put an end to it that is when exactly you're going to progress and see some results in your healing journey so when it comes to healing everybody heals at their own time so people heal differently there are people who are a little bit stronger now some people are weak so everybody heals and also depends it depends on the intensity of the abuse that you've gone through so the healing sometimes may be may be, may be the may be delayed a little bit sometimes it can, you can find people healing after two years people will heal after three years and again when i'm talking about healing i do not say everybody heals completely yes you can detox out of this energy you can heal and you can move on with your life 
But again, narcissism, remember, remember this has always been spiritual and this, this thing causes a very deep emotional wound within the victims of narcissistic abuse. So even if you heal, sometimes you can find that you are now have to, you, you now have to live to live with the scars. You know what I mean? So by living with the scars, this I, I mean that uh, you can always remember, it's like something you will always remember for the rest of your life. But when you heal, it comes to that point whereby you are no longer triggered. So you are no longer looking back and seeing certain incidents and you get triggered. Yes, you may sometimes get one or two triggers, but they do, they do not affect you in any way. So you can you can always still move on with your life, even if, even if sometimes you can recognize some of the things you've experienced before, you can come across them online, or sometimes you can meet people physically who have even sometimes been part of your abusive uh, uh, cycle. So the healing happens like that, whereby you can always move on with your life, but you, you will always remember the incidents, you always remember those individuals that have been involved, but again, you don't feel bad about them, you don't feel too good about them, and most of the cases, you have, you have even forgiven them, and you've just let them be just for your own sanity. So stage number one of the stages of recovery this is the process whereby you've been with the narcissist. And at the end of that entanglement, you're going to notice um, it's like uh, you're very desperate. You're going to become very, very desperate. So you're going to run into a stage of despair whereby you're going to start losing hope. You're going to lose hope of whatever it is that has been going on in that situation. You're going to notice that every, you're going to notice that everything is falling apart. You're going to try to put the things together. It is not going to work. You're going to try to fix those individuals. It's not going to work. You're going to do each and everything in your power to make sure that sometimes it could have been a, it could have been a marriage and you're trying to save a marriage. So it is going to look like there's nothing you can do that can save the situation. It is like the narcissist is in that point whereby they are at no return. So it is like they have switched to another a completely, completely different individual and you can no longer recognize them. You know what I mean? So it's like you're looking at them and you're thinking, can I really save these individuals? Can we do something about it? Can we go to therapy? Can we do this? There is nothing you're going to do. It is going to work. At that point, you're going to understand, guys, I've always mentioned in my videos, this is a spiritual warfare. And in the narcissist cycle, that is a specific stage they have reached. And it is, it is a stage of no return. They have got to go through that stage of their abuse. And then until they reach another stage. So like I've said, you guys have heard me mentioning all the stages that go through, that people go through when they're being abused by the narcissist. So that stage of the desperation, uh, normally is a very torturing stage because... You're trying to pick up all the pieces. You're trying to understand what can you do. It is like you are completely desperate of everything. So that stage now, the desperation stage, is also going to move you to the stage number two, which is going to be the stage whereby you're now going to start searching online for answers. You're going to start seeking for answers. You're going to read some books. You're going to go online. You're going to, you're going to do everything in your power to make sure that you understand what is going on. Because at this stage, the narcissist is out of control. In the state of the desperation, I can guarantee you guys, according also, also, also according to my journey, the narcissist is out of control and there is nothing you can do to stop them. It is like at that moment, they are just running at like a thousand miles an hour and there is nothing you can do to fix them, to stop them. They are just going to keep going. And most of the cases, you are in their way. You know what I mean? So that's why the, the problem comes. Now they start to abuse, abuse you intensively. That's why you guys have heard me talking about the devaluation stage. So at that stage, you have got to understand if you're if you're if you're in that stage because I think I've seen some comments on my uh, my channel as well. If you're in that stage, you have to know it is a stage that is going to also drive you out of that situation because that stage has got to happen for you to go to the next one, which is going to lead you to the next one, and eventually you're going to become a free being. So when you are desperate and you're having a lot of despair, you've lost the hope, you're being devalued every single day, you're being crushed down every single day, you're being beaten down every single day. The nurses will beat you down. And as you fall down, they keep on stepping on you. They will do everything in your power to make sure that they break your spirit. You know what I mean? So that is the stage where the narcissist is out of control. It leads the victim of narcissistic abuse to become extremely desperate and seek for answers. But at the end of the day, those individuals, eventually, they are going to start asking some friends, going around asking some aunties, some relatives, talking with people, and they are going to start to seek for answers. Now, in my own journey, I had to seek for answers as well because I had to go online and see what is exactly is going on? Because at that moment, I did not know I was completely puzzled. I, did, I didn't know what exactly did I have to do to calm down the situation. So that is what led me to go online and start to seek desperately for answers. Now, when you go online, those are uh, whatever, whatever, whatever it is it may be for you. Sometimes people, most of the uh, these victims of narcissistic abuse, they end up going online and seeking for answers. But for me as well, it was online, and that is when I came across the video. And that video, actually, it is the one that gave me all the answers I was looking for. And that video, in that stage, normally when you're looking online, that is where you're going to happen to have the switch. So the switch is going to turn on. 
you're going to land on a post that post is going to ex exactly explain to you what exactly is going on in your situation the person you're dealing with they're probably nurses they're probably psychopaths they're probably sociopaths they're probably all these kind of things so you're going to now come and land across a post and that post is where is what is going to trigger you to have your light light bulbs switched on and you're going to get the light bulb uh, sometimes i call it the aha moment you know what i mean so you get the aha moment now in my case the aha moment is exactly also what awakened me because that's exactly when i got the exact awakening that's exactly when my spiritual awakening happened for the most of you guys who have not seen my video you can always go back i've shared the video about my spiritual awakening exactly exactly how it happened so you get the aha moment it's like a very big huge bang you know what i mean the bang in your head is like you're going to feel your head is exploding because it's like you have been seeking for answers for so many years some of the some of the victims of narcissistic abuse have been have been seeking for answers for 10 20 years they have never really got exactly what they are what they are going through they have, they have never really understood what is going on but you get the aha moment and you land on the post it can be a post that you read in the book it can be somebody you, you may overhear somebody speaking uh, in your in your work in your workplace you may come across a post online that post is going to give you clarity and you're going to understand that actually and, Haha, now so you get it whatever it is you've been dealing with you've been dealing with a very toxic individual you've been dealing with a narcissist you're going to get the aha moment some people they may not exactly wake up at that point they may not get the spiritual awakening but me personally that's when i got the the big bang so it's like the spiritual awakening exactly happened in that moment and my bulbs went on and they figured out everything what was going on now the third stage is going to be that stage whereby for some moment for some for some for some few days after that you're going to have um you're going to some somehow live in a denial so you're going to be some in some kind of a denial you're going to be fighting with it you'll be thinking that ah but how can how can it be that all these years for all these seven years for me personally i was seven years with the nurses so i was like thinking how come that uh, for all these seven years i was not able to see this how could how could i have missed all the most important thing in my life for as long as i've lived that was the most important thing i knew that i had missed for the for the last seven years so for the most of you now you're going to start living in denial you're going to struggle a little bit uh you're going to have some kind of an excuse you're going to think but no it's not possible that these people have been with them for 20 years i've been with them for 10 years and i could not figure out they are the nurses so you're going to start fighting with yourself your mind is going to struggle a little bit you're going to leave, you're going to some kind sometimes look for an excuse to see if you can train maybe sometime to talk with them to see if things can work or things like that but guys i can guarantee you whatever it is you're looking for you have, you, have, you have already got the confirmation the very moment you've discovered those individuals are narcissists that message was meant to reach you at the right time and you have got to know there's nothing you can do that stage is going to happen you're going to get uh, a lot of excuses in your mind you're going to want to to see if you can uh, work things out to see if you can try to believe them now that moment is going to also make become a little bit challenging for you because now you're going to start getting scared about your next moves you're going to start getting scared about leaving your children behind you'll get scared about leaving your homes behind so for the most of you guys have already bought houses with the narcissists you've already bought uh, you've already bought mortgages you've already uh you, you already you already have car finances going on you've got some loans in the bank that is when you're going to start to struggle with all situation what is going on because you're going to think okay so now these individuals the narcissists maybe sometimes you haven't yet told them so you're still struggling with yourself in the mind and you're thinking how am i going to now pay the mortgage how am i going to pay the loans how am i going to do this how am i going to do that and that is exactly where it becomes very confusing because a lot of individuals when they think about all these financial ties and sometimes family ties involved with this kind of individuals some people they decide to say okay we are we are i'm going to try to see if i can wait maybe let me wait for next for the next three months let me wait for the next six months six months i want to guarantee you guys that whichever way you want to look at it you can even wait for a whole year nothing is going to happen nothing will change the abuse is going to still is, is still going to continue you're going to still go back in that same cycle that you've always been so you when you have seen it you have seen it and you cannot unsee it when you have understood you have understood you cannot reverse this kind of system it has happened it has happened you've got to accept things for what they are now in the fourth stage that is where you're going to find um a lot of depression now when you notice that actually uh there's nothing you can do it's like you've been struggling all these years there's nothing you can do it is going to like bring you into some, into some kind of a depression now of course when i get the chance i may share my videos or uh, my pictures on the screen the moment when i when i was going through the grief when i finally understood that this was going on this was obvious going on and there was nothing i could do so I, was, I went into some kind of a depression in that time that depression might have taken me for about two or three weeks so i, I ran into a very very massive depression so that's why i advise most of you guys for the most of you guys have not, who have not seen my my video about the recovery process after narcissistic abuse i may have to share that link in the section below 
So that is the period where you're supposed to stop whatever it is you're doing. If you're in the workplace, you're supposed to stop your work in that point because you're supposed to put your mind together and get your mind back together. So that is the moment where you're supposed to go quiet. Go ghost, go quiet and sit down by yourself and try to process what exactly is going on because in this point I can guarantee you there is nothing you can do that will ever make sense. Everything you do, whatever you, whether it is going to work, going out with your friends, going to do whatever it is you're going to do is going to stop make sense because you're going through something what they call a depression. So you're grieving this loss. Your understanding is probably is, is probably a loss. Yes, you have lost all these years of your life with somebody who was not, who was not even meant to be with you. So you're starting to kind of understand it. But again, understanding it is going to be difficult because it is also going to bring you into some kind of a depression. You know what I mean? So when you leave the depression stage now, that's when you're going to go to the fifth one, whereby you're going to know that, okay, so um, it is understandable that there's nothing you can do. You know what I mean? These people, they're individuals, they're, they're sick. They're demon demon demonically possessed. So for the most of you guys who have already understood what is narcissism, it's a spiritual warfare. These individuals, they're extremely demonically, demonically possessed. You will now understand that uh, there's nothing you can do about this. And because of your own sanity and your own protection, now you're going to go to desperate means and you're going to accept your mind and your soul is going to accept to let them go. So for me, after the depression stage, that's where, that's where I, I had to uh, personally sit down with the narcissist. In that time, of course, I did not tell them that I knew who they are, so who they were, so I just kept it to myself. My awakening stage, I always kept it to myself. So I had to sit down with the narcissist and I had to tell the narcissist, okay, so you know what? It's okay. Uh, there's no more fighting. Uh, I'm going to let this thing go. I'm going to get, I'm going to let this marriage go. So we don't need to fight about it about this anymore. And uh, and again, by the time you come to that point, you have already started like unplugging. So there's, there, there, there's like these nails that have been pinned all over your body. But now you started to to like unplug the nails one by one. It's like the soul is trying is starting to heal. You know what I mean? So that's the moment whereby you have got that little bit of I'm gonna let it go. You know what I mean? So you're gonna sit with them and you're gonna tell them, okay, it's okay. I understand everything that has been going on. I'm going to leave you guys. I'm going to let you go. And everything is going to be okay with me. Don't worry about this. And you guys, you can go on with your life. I can go on with my life. So for me, it has been in that way. But for some people, it can be in a way whereby you just leave those individuals quietly. You know what I mean? So for all of a sudden, you may have awakened when they are in their workplaces or when they are away, away on a holiday or things like that. You go to the awakening. So sometimes individuals have decided to go get out of these, these situations very quietly without those individuals knowing. But for me, because I'd already got the awakening and I was still with the narcissist and there was still there was still this transition thing going on and the cheating and everything and the devaluation, I just told the narcissist, it's okay, I'm going to let this whole thing go and I'm going to just carry on with my life and we can all live our own lives, you know what I mean? So that's the, that's the time whereby I accepted that I'm going to let this, this thing go. So on that fifth stage, wherever you are, whoever you are, you're going to come to that conclusion whereby you're going to accept everything for what it is. You're going to understand you've been abused. Your mind and your soul now is starting to come to terms with this whole thing. And you're starting to release the narcissist. You know what I mean? So that's when you know. If you come to that stage whereby now you're starting to release the narcissist out of your soul, that is exactly when you know you are on the right step of recovery. So that stage is supposed to happen because your body is detaching emotionally and spiritually. And on the soul level, you are starting to detach from the narcissist. And you're starting to release them and actually accepting them to go. You know what I mean? So the sixth stage now is going to be the stage whereby when you have let them go, now you're going to decide to, you're going to decide to move on and go somewhere to your own place, to a new place. And most of the cases I've advised you guys, if you're on that stage, you don't have to let the nurses know exactly where you're going. So you don't have to let them know where you're going to be living. I remember for me, I had to keep myself the, the, my new address to myself for about, I think it took me about two or three months. I had to keep it to myself. So I never allowed the nurses to ever know where I'm living, you know what I mean? Because normally when they know where, where you're living, they're going to keep on stalking you, they're going to keep on showing up at your door because remember these individuals, they are possessed and they cannot believe that somebody can never leave them and can never continue continue with them. And it does not matter even if they have married somebody else, they have moved into somebody else, they are pregnant with somebody else, those narcissists, they will always stalk you, they will always follow you, they will always want to know where you're living. So in those stages whereby you have accepted that thing to let it go, the fifth stage, you're going to now go and find your own place. And normally, for a lot of individuals who have left narcissists, they have left with nothing. I remember myself when I was leaving the narcissist, I did not live with a penny. Let me repeat this, guys. When I was leaving the narcissist, for the most of you guys who are finding excuses, you're saying, oh, you don't have money, you don't have this, you don't have that. There is a will, there is a way. Any place where there's a will, there's a way. When you decide in your mind and you decide to take the decision, there's lots of places you can go. I've mentioned yesterday in my video, I've told you, you can even have to go to a shelter if that's going to be your beginning point of your recovery process. 
You might have to call a shelter and go and start building your life in a shelter. Things are going to get well with you. There's no, there's no, there's no reason for you to believe that you're supposed to stay with a toxic individual because you've got no place to go. You've got no financial support or things like that. You can call a friend. You can call a relative. You can go to a shelter if you have to. But when, when you have seen it, guys, I will say it again, again, again and again. You have seen it. You cannot unsee it. When you have known, you cannot, you cannot reverse this kind of thing. You, have, you, you know it. You know it. You've seen it. You've seen it. So you're supposed to start keep, keep on moving forward. Fight with it. Yes, you're going to fight with it. Your body and soul is going to fight with it. But you're supposed to keep on moving forward, guys, because there's a light at the end of the tunnel. So at that stage now, when you've finally found some place where you're going to go, you found probably a room or maybe you're going to move in with your friend or sometimes you're going to be accommodated in a shelter or things like that. That is when you're going to start to gather all the pieces together. You're going to start rebuilding your life. Now that is the sixth, sixth stage whereby you're going to start to rebuild your life all over again. You're going to start to gather all the lost pieces to rebuild all this, thing, uh, this kind of thing. So you're going to construct your life all over again. And again, I can say also that it's very painful to start all over again. I'll, I will not say that it's an easy journey. Any moment to decide that uh, you've left the narcissist, you've gone to your undisclosed location, you've started the healing process, you've started working on yourself, now you start to build your life all over again. You know what I mean? So you start to build from scratch. Me, myself, like I've mentioned in my videos, I left without a penny. The only thing I left when I was leaving home was my clothes. I just put my clothes in a suitcase, and that is how I started my life, and I went out to become the person I am today. So for the most of you guys, I know it's going to be very difficult to understand this, but I can guarantee you guys, you can live with one shirt, you can live with one shoe, you can live, you will not live with a mattress, you will not live with anything, any, any beddings, you, you will not even sometimes live with a cup or a plate. You are going to live as an individual, but you are supposed to know, you are supposed to live with faith. When you are living with, a, when, when you are living a narcissist forever, you are supposed to live with faith. You are supposed to understand there are better days ahead of your life and there is something better to look for at the end of the road. So you start to build your life in the sixth stage. You start to gather all the pieces, put everything back together. You may sometimes find your uh, find a new job or something like that because most of the guys who have left nurses, they have decided to go and find some kind of new employment, maybe new, new places they have left. They have left their old jobs that they were doing before. They have started to find some new jobs. You start to get a new job. You start to buy your things one by one. You start to, to buy your, your beddings, your mattress, your this and that, your cups and plates. So you start to build your life all over again without the nurses because now you understand you have left them behind and they are no longer part of you and you continue with your life for good. So as you're building now your life, you become um, later on at, a set, uh, at the seventh stage, which is going to be the last one, you now become a thriver of narcissistic abuse. So this is whereby you become very wise about this because remember, even in the process of rebuilding your life, you're still gathering information, you're still getting some therapy, you're still getting some coaching sessions, you're still talking to the people who understand this kind of abuse. You're still talking to a lot of people. You're still reading books. You're still gathering a lot of information online. And you're now storing everything in your memory. And you're understanding now that you, you get it. This is narcissistic abuse. It is what it is. There's no going back. Those individuals, they are demonic. They are, they are evil. They are this and that. Now you're becoming a thriver. You're becoming more healthy. Because remember, every moment you keep on working on yourself, you become more healthy. You become more wiser. You become more intelligent. You become more happy. That is when exactly you're going to start meeting a lot of people who are like you. You're going to meet a lot of a lot of uh, survivors who are like you, who understand where you have been, who have also walked your journey. You're now going to start meeting the people that they call your soul tribe. Your soul tribe is going to start to come in. Now, when your soul tribe is going to come in, that's when it's going to confirm to you that whatever has been going on in your life, it wasn't all about you. So there were so many people around the world who are like you, who are in the situation you have been. But because now you're awakened to it, you understand it, you can understand it for what it is, you now start to meet the people who can resonate with that kind of energy, who can resonate with you, who understand where you've been, who understand where you're going, and you also go to meet the thrivers like you. And in most of the cases for the thrivers of narcissistic abuse, they have also ended up um, starting to share their own journey, their own story. So they are like starting to their own little platforms. Sometimes they may start on YouTube, they may go on their Instagrams, they may go in their Facebook channels, whatever, whatever platform you can use, you are now starting to create awareness to the other individuals out there who are also in the situation like that and you're starting to see what you can do to help them because you've already been through that stage and now as a thriver of narcissistic abuse you're also trying to help and get your, get the information out and get the message out to all the people out there who are also going through that same situation but again it doesn't mean that everybody has got to come out on the platform of things like that some people may decide they don't go to make a platform or like that so they may just decide to like to write some kind of a book to address whatever they have whatever they have gone through in some kind of a book they may start to write their own books they may write their own songs 
they may do whatever it is, but for somehow a thriver of narcissistic abuse, they also one one thing I've noticed along my journey is that the thrivers of narcissistic abuse they are very excited about sharing these kind of stories. So they are using platforms, different platforms, different media platforms and social media platforms to come out and share their journey so that now they can interact and meet their tribe, the individuals who are also in those situations and try to help them see if they can get them out. And that is exactly when, in my thriving situation, that is when I, uh, I created uh, the Empath Exodus. That was about two and a half years ago. That is when I noticed, I remember that day like yesterday, I just went on my Facebook and I said from today onwards, I'm going to break empaths free and I'm creating the Empath Exodus to help other individuals who are also going through narcissistic abuse. So guys, again, if this video makes sense, as always, give us a like, share this video, don't forget to comment, let us know what you think, and I'll catch you in my next, uh, I'll catch you in my next one. Much love and blessings, guys. Desmo signing out, and peace.